Hey there, Lick and Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lick and Riff, in which we'll discuss arranging songs into finger style. How to arrange any song into finger style. Now, um, I want to be completely honest with you. This uh, will also be a shameless plug for my arrangement course and my ear training course, but I will give you all the answers. I'll give you a full roadmap. I'll give you, you know, an insight into my own process of arranging songs. And then you'll decide uh, yourself if you want my help by, you know, purchasing the courses or not, or if you want to go at it alone, which is completely fine. So, um, arranging songs doesn't start by arranging songs. It starts in your ear, okay, with ear training. You need a good ear. You don't need a strong ear, okay? It's, it's okay to search for the melody. It's okay to try and transcribe and try to find the melody on the neck and try to fit it into a chord shape and try to find the right expression. Okay, that's what creation is all about. But you need at least, you know, a good ear, a good musical ear that's trained on the guitar. By that I mean that if you hear, you know, a melody, you can immediately visualize, you know, in your mind's eye, whether it's uh, two frets apart, whether it's three frets apart, whether uh, it's a minor scale or a major scale, you need at least that knowledge, okay, in your ear. You need your ear to be a little bit trained at least. And then if your ear is not trained, you can start by either my ear training course or transcribing things on your own. Okay, and the arrangement process is a transcription process most of the time. Even if you have the sheet music, even if you have the chords for the song, you still have to transcribe it. You still have to find your own way of playing it. And I have right here on Lick and Ref already for free a full course on chords around the neck, chord logic on the guitar called Finally Understanding Chords. Now that will help you um, visualize everything on the neck and for example you have the same notes okay exactly the same notes not an octave apart exactly the same notes in different places uh, on the neck for example you have okay, E F sharp and G you have it here too yeah, it's the same notes it's okay, and then it's yeah, it's exactly the same notes uh, my guitar might not be perfectly tuned, but that's fine for the purposes of the demonstration. So, okay, exactly the same. And you also have it here. Okay, so if you have E minor, you already have three ways in which you can arrange it. Okay, you have this. You can do it like this. Um, okay, sound like... Okay, which sounds different than... Okay, it sounds different than open strings. You have, okay? And uh, you can also do it like this, okay? Or, um, okay? You can make a solo out of it. So you need some experience. That's the second step. You need some, at least some experience with finger style. You need to have at least a little bit of knowledge on how to operate the guitar in finger style. And a good way to gain experience in fingerstyle is by learning fingerstyle material, but learning it critically. Every fingerstyle arrangement on this channel, you can take it and in during the lessons, the fingerstyle arrangement lessons, I always explain my thought process behind the arrangement, why I chose a certain chord. I don't go too much in depth into it, uh, because, you know, you want to learn it quickly, but you can still have a critical eye for what my process is. For example, if I have, uh, if you have a song with uh, these notes. Okay? Then the first thing you'll want to do is to transcribe this line. If this is what the singer is singing, you'll want to transcribe it. 
They sound like this. And if your chords, for example, are G, D, and E minor. And there are plenty of songs with that chord progression. Then you'd need to have some experience with these chords in finger style and know the chords, you know, the notes inside the chord, okay, the chord shapes. And the, the choices are different between different chord shapes. Okay? This sounds different than... Okay? But since you have this, okay, then you can do... Okay? And add it to the chords. Now, um, I gave this example um, because it's an easy example and I could improvise it on the spot, but this is practically what fingerstyle arrangement is. The more experienced you are with the chords in fingerstyle, and uh, we go into that in the ear training course, of course, of course, um, recognizing the notes inside the chords and the connections between them and how to add notes to them and how to recognize the scales that you can use, um, then once you have that experience, the arrangement process becomes easier. You can go the other way around about it and actually try to arrange and learn that way. Right? That's how I did it. But I should tell you right now, the more you try things yourself, the more autodidactic you are, the longer things take. Um, it's fun, but it can be a frustrating process. Um, so, for example, if we have that, Okay? And we want to arrange it in a different sound. Okay? Then we'd find, okay? we'd find the, okay? the same notes inside those chords. Okay? And then we'd have a different expression. Okay? And we can arrange it differently. Okay? Okay, we can do... We can... Um, Okay, we can harmonize okay? and add different rhythmic patterns instead of okay? um, and that's just three chords G D and E minor what happens if you have embellishments okay what happens if you have okay, and add nine what happens if you have uh, a jazz minor ninth chord, you know, um, with a seventh and the ninth. Okay, you need to learn how to hear those things. When you want to arrange something, I'd suggest that you start with songs you like. Okay, again, that's a given, but um, you shouldn't try simple songs just because they're simple. You should try something you like because that would give you motivation to continue. Okay, because your first arrangements will probably take time and they're, they'll probably be simple anyway. Even if you have a lot of bass change, um, a lot of chord changes, I mean, you'd probably want to start with bass and melody arrangements. Okay, so like uh, this. Um, Okay? That would be probably how you'd arrange the melody. You'd take the bass notes for the chords. Okay? And then, after you're more proficient with it, you'll start adding the, um, the extra notes from the chord. So, that's the arrangement process, basically. You transcribe the melody, you add the chords to them, or you know, transcribe the chords first and then add the melody on top of them using your existing finger style experience and your ear training. Everything starts and ends in the ear. It starts by listening and then transcribing and it ends with something that is pleasant to your ear. Everything comes right back to music, to, you know, sound, to, to, to the air waves moving. So, um, so that's the arrangement process. If you'd like my help, I'd be more than happy to help. The courses are at clickandriff.com slash courses, and I'd be more than happy to help. You can also have a Skype lesson with me if you like, after you learn the courses, so I can show you the ropes. Um, I'm here to help you, so that's my 
that's how I view the arrangement process. Other guitar players um, might see this differently, but I really don't see how, how that can you know, be possible because it's still the same instrument and music is always music. You know, it's harmony and melody and rhythm. Rhythm, most of all. See you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.